Welcome to Health Talk. Thank you for joining us. Today we have with us Dr. Julia Shalesko, who is director of the Wound Care Center affiliated with Good Samaritan Hospital. It's a wound care center with a hyperbaric oxygen center as well. Today's topic is wound care and what's new. So first, Dr. Julia, what is a wound? Well, one, I want to thank you, Gloria, for having me on your show today. I'm really excited. So a wound is any opening in the skin, and it could be really simple, like a cut, abrasion, a puncture wound. It could be a burn, or even a wound from a surgery that just didn't heal. Yeah, so example, you have a picture here, like healthy skin. So tell us what happens with a healthy skin getting a cut and something that won't heal. So here we have the skin with its, all its underlying layers. You want to walk us through this? Um, sure. So the utmost layer is the what we call the epidermis. And it's your skin, and it actually sheds every two weeks. So we're always renewing our skin. And then we have the dermis, and we have uh, the hypodermis, which has blood vessels. And you also have your uh, sweat glands and scent glands. And what happens when we age, or let me back up, when you're young, Usually when you have an injury, you heal really quickly. But when we age, the padding gets decreased. And so this so, part gets Yeah, decreased. all the fat pad, the collagen, we have less of it. So you may notice these patients having really thin skin. It tears really easy. The junction between the cells are really loose. And then their blood vessels, they tend to bleed really easy. And so they tend to have a lot of black and blue marks. So we can see that in our grandparents and in people, as we all have more birthdays, we can tell they talk about how, especially all the ads on television, losing our collagen. So we're really losing the innermost layers. So for example, in a non-healing wound or a cut that doesn't heal, what is considered long for not healing? Well, we consider a non-healing wound uh, an issue when it's still present at four to six weeks. And then we have to investigate, well, why didn't that wound heal? So is it due to infection? Are they in, keep injuring that area? Uh, do they have rheumatoid arthritis or are they, do they have cancer and they're on medications that prevent their wounds to heal? Or, or are they diabetics? Right, diabetes. Or they're a smoker? Correct. And smoking yeah. really affects the circulation. Their blood vessels decrease, so I kind of warn the patients that if you want your wound to heal, you have to stop smoking because they already have an issue with circulation, and then they're robbing that wound of oxygen that they need. So what happens in diabetes and smoking, these blood vessels down here are affected. Correct. So in diabetes, I see a lot of diabetic patients, that circulation is compromised because the high blood sugar causes the cells that create these blood vessels to fall off. So the oxygen that does not get from point A to point B. So it just does not carry the nutrients. And then people who smoke, their blood vessels are also abnormal. They become either narrow or they are in spasm and they have chronic changes. And if you have high blood pressure, add that to this mix, the blood, uh, circulation is compromised. So then you must have a lot of patients with all these three components. Correct. And then, so who makes the referral? Do I just call you up as a patient or? Well, we have had people just say, I saw the wound care center and they walked right in. So we do take uh, walk-ins. Uh, we do get a lot of referrals from family practice doctors, surgeons, a lot of orthopedic surgeons where uh, there, there may be an issue with their wounds and they really don't want to take these patients back to surgery. So uh, we try to heal these patients with the great products that we have. Uh, so one of the things, especially as you mentioned surgery, if you have a non-healing wound as like a, a fracture with the bone sticking out or they had to op leave it open. So in older people, this is a problem. I'm probably in that category myself, so I better not break a bone. Anyway, so what happens is that they come to you and then what, if assuming they're diabetic, and they have a little weight issue, and it's not healing after six weeks, what do you, do you tell the patient? What to expect? Okay, so when a patient first comes to us, we have to be a detective and figure out why their wound isn't healing. Particularly on the lower part of their leg, as you get further down the leg, there's less circulation available to the wound. So we first look at their vasculature. You know, do they have enough arterial blood flow to the wound? Um, is it a vein problem where their legs are so swollen that fluid's uh, seeping out? Uh, are their diabetes under control? Do they have any heart issues or kidney problems? And then what I tell the patient 
So we see if there's an infection, we'll culture the wound. But we do debridements. And I tell them that the first few visits to our center is getting this wound clean. And their wound is stalled because it has this covering over the wound. And the body thinks, oh, my job's done. I don't have to do anything. So we have to remove all that's not healthy, stimulate the body to say, oh, there's a wound. And it keeps releasing growth factors and gets this wound to heal. So we have a slide of a debridement uh, that we do at our office. So we have that. We'll cut to that now. And see the slide of debridement right now on the screen. So uh, there's uh, Dr. Javid with one of our nurses and these patients have to come on a weekly basis so we have to keep making sure that this wound stays clean and that we're stimulating it as if it's a new wound. Once we get this wound clean then we have a variety of products such as collagen, we have skin substitute agents, some are derived from uh, baby foreskin, we have uh, products from the uh, stomach, excuse me, the small intestine intestine of pigs, bladder uh, products, and then now we're using placental uh, membrane. Uh, we also have products that are like a vacuum. You put it on the wound and it stimulates the cell migration into the wound and fills it in such a more efficient manner. Now there's the old method from the Civil War, which is maggots, which Los Angeles and Southern California still uses. Now tell us a little bit why maggots are still useful. Um, well, we have better products, but maggots are still very efficient in that they know what is bad tissue, they eat it up, and they only leave the most healthy tissue behind. So they're very selective. So that's one way of cleaning wounds. Not my preferred method, uh, but we do have a product um, that's an enzymatic debrider that recognizes, it's actually derived from bacteria. It takes two years to make it. Um, but you apply this thick ointment on, and it knows which is the bad stuff and which is the good stuff. So your tissue can continue to heal underneath while this is sloughing off. So what happens with a wound that's non-healing, you're letting the tissue from below heal upward. Correct. So then you reach a healthy skin again. Yes. So all this underneath tissue regrows and creates a foundation so that there is healthy uh, skin. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, the most complicated wound you had to heal and the most simple? Well, I feel some of the most complicated ones are actually your pressure wounds. And unfortunately, these are elderly patients. They're malnourished. Um, they can't move very, very, they can't move around very well. And you have to tell the family members to move them every two hours. So if they're not offloading, let's say, a hip wound or a buttock wound, we can't heal them. So they have, we, it's a joint process between patient and physician to get these wounds to heal. And so um, it takes a while. I mean, I've had them for years just trying to get them to heal. And even if I do heal them, sometimes they bounce back because they're just so elderly and they still go back into you know, their same habits of sleeping on their side when they should be sleeping on their back. Now, what about the more common simple wounds that take X amount of time to heal. So what's the simplest wound and how long you know, is like the shortest possible time if you have a simple wound? What's that? Um, I would say it would be my 18-year-old uh, girl. Uh, she was um, exercising. She was jumping over a metal box and she hit the box so she sustained wounds. She was actually on the operating table getting knee surgery when the anesthesiologist was prepping her leg, saw the wounds, stopped the surgery and said, we can't do your surgery until these wounds are healed. And so that still took about a month. She actually got it. Her wound was down to muscle fascia. So, so that it's is all the way uh, down. So it's right above muscle. So it's way down here. And so we had collagen. So we cleaned it. We packed it with collagen. And what's great about collagen is it provides a scaffolding for the cells to bridge across. And they heal so much faster. Wow, that's wonderful. Now, you also see automobile crush injuries. Yes. You, so that also is a wound as well. Yes. Now, you have a, a, a little foot here. Yes. Now, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, diabetics have feet problems. Tell us a little bit how diabetic feet injuries, they get foot ulcers and leg ulcers. Tell us a little bit about that and as so, I hold the foot. Um, diabetics, because they have sugar in their blood, it interacts with the cells and it affects the uh, cellular structure. They lose the support of their foot, so they become then flat-footed, their anatomy can change. They could have uh, hammer toes, or so their foot toes could be like this. 
Yes, yeah. or their foot uh, could uh, sway out uh, in many different directions. Right. But what happens is then they have a greater surface area that can get injured when they walk. And because they unfortunately have what we call peripheral neuropathy, they can't, their feet can't feel. So they tend to walk a little bit different and they're injuring the bottom of their foot. And then one night they may be taking off their sock and then they see blood on their sock and they realize they have a wound. And they didn't even know it because they can't feel. So those are the patients we really want to be aggressive about. They try to self-treat at home, and this wound gets deeper and deeper, and it can become gangrenous, and then the bone can get infected. And once that bone's infected, they're at risk for amputation. And it's important, really, to get these patients before they get to that point, because once they have an amputation, a major one, their quality of life and their life expectancy is worse than someone who's had breast cancer or colon cancer. You know, when you talk about gangrenous, so you would expect that sometimes the toe turns black. Correct, yeah. yeah. So that's certainly a sign you don't want to miss. And before it turns black, sometimes it's just a non-healing uh, wound or a blister and people ignore it. Correct. Yeah. And also diabetics also get fungal infections, yes. which then prevent good wound healing as well because they have fungus and bacteria infection at the same time. Yes. So how often uh, do you see diabetic patients? Every day? Yes, they're uh, one of the biggest population of patients we see. And so we have to educate them that every night they have to wash their feet. After washing their feet, they should look between their toes, the bottom of their foot. They can even use a mirror, or they could sit down, show their foot against a wall mirror, or there's uh, handles with mirrors so they could take a look at the bottom of their feet and really be careful uh, that there's no injury, and if there is, then they need to be seen. We also advise them that when they do see their primary doctor to automatically take off their shoes and, shoes, shoes and socks to make sure that they get looked at. There is a common problem because now that we're having teenagers with early uh, type 2 diabetes, you know, non-insulin dependent, mm -hmm. so there's a growth, outgrowth of a obesity epidemic among teenagers, so diabetes is going to be an increasing problem yes. and all these complications of wounds. Now, um, some of your, what's the most oddest wound that you had to take care of? Oddest, you, let you me You told me see. one that um, was a big save, that was a crush injury. Um, there was a, um, it was a lady who you, it, it took, it was a young woman and she did well. Ooh, I'm thinking of multiple crush injury uh, patients. Um, there was one gentleman who uh, was young in his 20s. He was involved in a rollover accident and the window was open so he put his hand down and then the car crushed his hand and then he was able to uh, do well with um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and debridement. Now, debridement is done for every wound to keep it clean. Correct. So that's like the first thing to expect when a patient walks in. Yes. Um, so is the first visit that, is that the first appointment that lasts about an hour? Or tell us a little bit what happens. It, it is a very comprehensive um, visit. We go very um, thorough with their past medical history. We take a look at their wounds. And the first job is, you know, what's going on. So we check their circulation. So I'll check their pulses. We may do other uh, studies to look at their circulation. We'll culture the wound. But I won't culture until after I debride it so I get a real true meaning of what's going on with that wound. And then we'll use uh, a different variety of products to help get that wound clean. So, um, what is the most uh, common product you use to keep a wound clean? Because you mentioned uh, a bunch of them. Well, one is um, Santal, which is an enzymatic debrider. It's made from Clostridium histolyticum. So it's amazing that they could take a bacteria, and after two years' time, and this bacteria or this ointment knows to debride, like a maggot would, what is bad and leave what is good. And um, that's a really good product that uh, we use, particularly around the backside, because there's a soiling issue. And even if I want to use a collagen, I can, 
or some other product yeah. I can't because the soil it's not a clean area. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to get people to heal with just using that uh, ointment. So let's say they come in and you make the assessment and they get the debridement. And then the second visit, how, when is the next visit? Let's say it's a non-healing wound on the rump, on the rear end, uh, and this patient has been, um, is considered like a bed sore because they haven't been uh, turned mm -hmm. appropriately in a, in a nursing home. So the first visit is the assessment. So what's, what, when do you see them again? In a week, two weeks? We see them on a weekly basis. So we, we want to make sure that these wounds don't decompensate. And if I'm really concerned about a patient, maybe because of infection, I happen to be there twice a week, so sometimes I'll have them come back two days later just to make sure nothing severe has developed. But it's generally on a weekly basis, so you want to keep cleaning these wounds. You want to be on top of it, because anytime you stop, they can just revert back to a chronic wound again. So you also mentioned your center has a hydraulic lift or some sort of lift so yes. that you could lift somebody from a wheelchair or a gurney to be seen. So we have um, quite a few patients who are either quadriplegic, paraplegic, or patients who are just really immobile. They may have had strokes. So we have what's called a Hoyer lift, and we strap it around the patient and it gently lifts them and gets them on the bed so that we can do, um, we can evaluate them for their wounds. Now, um, also, if you have uh, patients like this from a nursing home, you probably also get similar patients with non-healing flaps for yes. plastic surgery where it's a, uh, a flap that they had to do for a bad car accident or whatever. How long would that take? Let's say it's a skin flap on their lower leg and they're thin but mildly diabetic. So what, <laughs> so what happens? Uh, well, with those patients, um, we do have, see patients who have uh, pressure wounds. If they have a good musculature or tissue yeah. to work with, we will refer them to a plastic surgeon who can do a flap and help cover that area. We do have uh, patients who have had breast cancer, mastectomy, radiation injury, then they want that reconstructive surgery. And sometimes the quality of the tissue isn't good after the radiation treatment, and so it may not fall heal. apart. Um, so if they know they're going to get a flap, they can get that procedure. And we have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber that we can get them into that provides a lot of oxygen to their system and helps develop new blood vessel growth in that tissue and helps facilitate the healing of these types of uh, wounds. Now, in burn patients, um, you also see them, and sometimes they have multiple skin grafts, so they could be seeing you weekly as well. Correct. And um, are, you, are we the only center in this part of San Jose? Is there another one? Yeah, uh, O'Connor has a hospital, uh, excuse me, has a wound care center, and a regional also has a wound care center, but it doesn't have hyperbarics. And um, uh, now that we have many more breast cancer survivors than 10 years ago, is it more common to have uh, these patients who are having more complicated cosmetic surgery to, you know, you know, repair the deformity of having the breast removed. So how, how often do you see breast cancer patients after radiation? Is it a growing segment? Um, it's variable. Sometimes it, it comes in waves, so we'll see a couple, and then we won't see some for a while. Um, so it varies. And also you probably have non-healing from uh, colostomies and all these like various uh, drainages from bad appendicitis that had to have a drain or various things in extremely mm -hmm. obese patients or patients who've had diabetes and other complications. How long, how about those patients? You know, I, you ask me how long, it, they're really hard to predict. I mean, what can work for one patient is a, a different for another, but I have healed uh, surgical wounds where they had a feeding tube. The feeding tube came out and it keeps leaking fluid. Um, so we're, they're given to us and so we have a variety of products to help facilitate the healing of those wounds. Um, talking about length of time, I have two elderly gentlemen, they're both like 80s, 90s, they have a, a wound on their bony uh, ankle, and it's, it's interesting to watch. I'm using the same products for both, but one wife is a little more dilig diligent than, than the other one, uh. and the other one is practically healed, and the other one is just kind of, you so know, what is, off. Yeah, so what is the at-home care that the significant other has to do or a family member? So both these wounds are pressure wounds, so it's really important for the family member to make sure that they're not sleeping on their side and not injuring 
that area. So uh, one patient um, is propped with pillows. We have actually boots that keep their legs um, uh, straight. They have little wings on the side so they can't roll over on the side. Because when you sleep, you can't tell. And then, um, so it's really important. So that's why I say that there really has to be a partnership between patient and doctor in getting these wounds to heal. So let's say it's a non-healing pressure wound in these elderly people. Does, uh, does the wife or the significant other have to do peroxide or albetadine, anything like that? Uh, we do help them with home health service. So if the patient is really immobile, home health service will come out and provide dressing changes or if we're using a vacuum device, they will change the vacuum. So it makes it nice for the family that it becomes maintenance free. Uh, we do have some squeam squeamish family members, and so to make them a little bit more comfortable, like this week, mom didn't want to take care of her daughter's wound. Um, it was quite uh, deep. Um, so we had to come back, and we kind of showed her till she got more comfortable in doing the, the dressing changes. It's uh, sometimes uh, upsetting to family members to see this little hole in their loved mm, one's yes. skin, and the hole can be really deep because you can go all the way down yes. to muscle, so it can be daunting. Now, insurance does pay for home health services, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, Medicare um, for over and also 65, yeah. um, private, uh, you know, if they have private insurance, we'll get authorization. But the key thing to getting home health insurance depends on the device we use. If it's a vacuum, they will come out and uh, do the dressing change. We have to see the patient's immobile or they can't get around. So that's one of the key things we have to say in order to get someone out to the home and change their dressings every day. So we have about five minutes remaining. What would you like our, the take home message for our home audience if you see a loved one with a, a hole in their hand or a hole in their leg that's not healing for six weeks? What is the take home message? What is it that you want people to be alerted to that they would come seek care? Well, obviously, if they have a wound for four to six weeks, they should come to a wound care center. Um, it's, it's, the wound is saying, I'm not healing, or else it would have healed, uh, and they need assistance. And so that's where we can, again, take off any uh, deep, uh, what's bad tissue, what's not working for them, and replace it with products that will help, the, help them heal. Um, definitely diabetics, please don't wait. You know, the moment you notice an injury, please get it taken care of and don't wait, especially on the foot. It doesn't take much to get to bone, have a bone infection, and then you're at risk for amputation. And smokers and diabetics together, yes. the combined thing. Uh, you can tell smokers and your neighbors if their fingernails are yellowed from smoke. Yes. And the uh, fingernails no longer hold their shape, but there's clubbing, or meaning that each finger, instead of coming to a taper, comes out to like a, uh, a round little bulb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's important. So we should tell everybody to stop smoking. This is part of Obamacare, yes. all of us, including ophthalmologists. Yes. Um, the other thing is that if you notice if your child has had surgery or your loved one has had surgery and the wound is left open for a certain reason by the surgeon and it's not healing in an appropriate way, you would then try to ask more questions and ask about is there a special center devoted to this because maybe uh, you're not capable of providing the type of wound care that your surgeon wants you to provide because you know, the, sur mm -hmm. the surgical dressings and all that, and that, that this is available? Um, well, the products we have are really specialized and are expensive, so it makes it hard for a family practice doctor or a surgeon to have the products that we have, and ours is more gentle uh, for the patient to use. Um, so our site has greater avail uh, greater um, accessibility. Yeah, we have a b bigger toy box to yeah. use uh, to help heal these wounds versus other people out there. More tools. Correct. More tools. So it's important that to seek specialized care because wound centers now exist. This is a relatively new phenomenon that didn't exist 20 years ago, so this is good to be able to utilize these services, which are all available through uh, insurance plans. Yes. Now, what's another take-home message for our home audience that if you know people who have non-healing wounds, to tell them about this? You know, yes, we get a lot of referrals. Uh, usually a, a patient who's um, 
been treated will tell their other friends. Or I even had the daughter who I'm treating the mom. She said, Dad, oh, that was a crush injury. Dad crushed his finger. I think I see tendon. She dragged him in at the end of the day, and he we healed his finger, and he's able to move it. And so uh, that was a... So that's thing. excellent. So we're getting a better... Um, you know, return of function, you know, faster return of yes. function, improved uh, return of function, and not loss of function, not Correct. just having, you know, a black finger and having it amputated, especially in diabetes. Yeah, our goal is to get patients back to their normal lifestyle because it's um, debilitating or they can't go to the beach, they can't do a lot of the things they want to do or they're in pain, and the longer the wound exists, the more pain these patients have. So if you can heal them quickly, they can get around uh, doing the things that they normally like to do. Now, um, how long has this wound center been open with Good Sam? We've been open since 2010. So with each year, I'm sure your referrals have gotten bigger. Yes, we're looking to expand. Uh, we'd like to get two more uh, hyperbaric oxygen chambers, which I'll talk uh, later about. And um, we discovered a new ICU area that we'd like to convert and uh, have more beds available to us. So this is excellent. So the hyperbaric oxygen chamber is like a higher percentage of oxygen than normal, and that allows for better healing. Correct. And we're going to have a separate show about that. Yes. And uh, you're, we're one of the few that have both here in San Jose, correct? We're, yes. Do, uh, and does Stanford and UCSF have one as well? Yeah, they just opened their, product, uh, their uh, center this year, and so I hear they're doing really well as well. And do all burn? Hospitals have a wound care and hyperbaric oxygen chamber? Some centers will, ha will separate their burn center and the hyperbaric center, so it may be two locations, but they have a close um, relationship. So this is really very interesting, you know, like about what's new in wound care, that there's new things besides maggots from the Civil War. And uh, we want to tell our take-home audience, uh, all these take-home messages, that if you see a wound and it's not healing, four to six weeks, so the magic number, four to six weeks, to ask your doctor, ask about wound care centers, because now it's very specialized. And that if you have friends who are diabetics, to really, if they have any wound, don't wait, because it can be uh, very hard to take care of. So thank you for joining us. And if you like our show, donate to KSAR TV in Saratoga. And thank you very much. And we hope to see you again. Call us anytime. Thank you, Gloria.